about swimming on your back particularly doing your back crawl or backstroke or kicking on your back and do you really need to learn them as a beginner now if you are a competitive swimmer then you don't need to watch this video because learning how to kick on your back doing backstroke or back crawl as they say is a must in your field but for the average newbie swimmer that's just started swimming for the first time this is the video for you that you need to pay attention to okay so pay attention to what I'm gonna say in this video if you are a new swimmer usually the lessons start off with front crawl and then they move you to back crawl and then they move you to breaststroke and then finally butterfly if you ever get to that final goal. That's usually the step ladder that all of us swimmers go through as we learn swimming. It could take you a year, two years, three years, who knows, right? We all learn differently. For me, it took several years to get up to the point where I can do butterfly. The reason why I'm making this video is because you're probably wondering, do I need to learn back curl? Or that was the question that I asked myself a while back because when you think about it, what are you doing when you do back crawl? What do you look like when you do back crawl? To me, it's like driving a car in reverse on the highway. When you think about it, when you're doing back crawl, right? Your arms like this, and you're kicking and you're moving this way, you're moving at a really fast speed if you know what you're doing, okay? It's not a really slow stroke like, for example, breaststroke. You go really slow, <laughs> like the old ladies do in your pool. This is the thing that bugs me about back crawl, is that we were forced to learn it when we were starting out. So usually they would combine front crawl and back crawl together. So we would mix it back and forth. So we would do like front crawl exercises and then switch it with back crawl exercises whenever during that throughout the lesson. To me, that ate up a lot of time. In my opinion, if you are a new swimmer, you can bypass running back crawl altogether and just focus on doing your front crawl only, get really good at that, and then proceed to breaststroke immediately. Because it, it just eats up so much time, the learning curve is just huge, and you're gonna get frustrated. First, let's talk about the benefits of being on your back. When you're on your back, your kicking is a lot more effective, okay, versus kicking on your front. So, if you're struggling with front kicking, looking down like this, you notice that you don't really go far. And that's normal because when you're kicking on your front, you don't have much space or room to maneuver with your legs. As you can see, if I'm kicking like this, I only have this much space to maneuver the water with. This isn't how much space I have. It's very limited, as you can see, right? Whereas if I'm kicking onto my back, you notice that from my knee all the way down to my toes, is I have this much room to maneuver with. So it's like having flippers on my feet. Versus, if I'm kicking on my front, I have these little 
small paddles because the surface area is this big versus this big when you're on your back. If you like kicking in water, I recommend that you kick on your back, hold the kickboard onto your chest like this, and try to kick on your back. If I had a kickboard, and you're rocking and rolling. Kicking on your back is really fun actually, because you make these incredible gains, like you just move really fast. It's like you're flying in the water. You don't know why. It's like you have blinkers on. But no, it's just the, the room that you have to maneuver with is like this big. So it's really effective to kick on your back. However, there is a downside. Just like a T-Rex that has long legs and tiny little like chicken wing arms like this, same goes with back crawl. Because as you can see, when you're doing a back crawl, you have this much room to maneuver with, as you can see. This is my pushing power. This is my room to maneuver with when it comes to the arms. Not really effective. Now you're saying, what if I do this, like underhand? Uh, underhand is very difficult to do because it puts a lot of strain on your shoulders. For beginners, yes, this is very easy to pull off. Or easy to learn, but it's just hard to keep up. Especially if you're going to do this long term. Long term wise, you want to learn this way. This way. So, you want to improve your dynamics pushing this way. Put less stress onto your shoulders and make your arms work together. Make your wrist, make your elbow, make your tricep muscle. Your tricep muscle. You're doing this work here. When you're kicking on your back and you want to use your arms, ideally you want your arms to look like this. And if you just did that on your back, you would be A-OK, -okay. you'd be fine. But you probably want to take it to the final level. So you're probably wondering, why do we do this on a back row? Well, you notice that if I'm doing T-Rex arms like this, I don't have much room to maneuver. I am not utilizing the potential or the distance that I can actually reach with if I started here. It's like, this starting point is much better than this starting point, as you can see. So, in order to reach over here, I need to whoop, do the rain over the rainbow <laughs> reach like this, and then I can do my T-Rex arms and throw it that way. There's a disadvantage to doing this though, because this, yes, obviously it's easy to pull off, but as you can see, it's a very short distance. But if I do this, I get much greater distance. But the downside to doing this is, as you can see, is this. Do you see this water that's dripping off my hand? This water is going to fall onto your face and you're going to probably drink it, some of it. The water that keeps splashing from my hand um, when my arm exits the water and just blah, drips all over into my face. And you've got to filter that water. That water is going to enter your mouth and you're going to have to spit it out. Reason number one why you shouldn't learn the back crawl is because it's a blind move. Okay, think about it. This is what you're seeing. This is your viewpoint when you're on your back looking up doing your back crawl. Now, can you see what's ahead of you in this position? No, you can't. All you can see is the skylight. Now, if you're in a pool like this, you can see that there are no indicators to see where you're going. Now, if you're in an indoor pool that's uh, specialized in back crawl, you're gonna see indicators like flags on top that'll tell you like you're getting close to the wall. But in this situation right now, this is a completely blind move, right? And does it help if I look this way? No, 
I still can't see what's ahead of me. Now, does it help if I look this way? Not really, because it's gonna hurt my neck. If you crank your neck this far back, you're gonna get some serious neck pain. So, this is the ideal position of your head resting on the water when you're doing back crawl. Now, you gotta also compete with other swimmers. So, if there's someone ahead of you or someone behind you, how are you gonna tell how far they are from you? You can't. It's a completely blind move. And the worst case scenario without indicators, without seeing where you're going is, boom, you're gonna hit your head on a wall like this. And I've struck my head or hands onto concrete like this so many times as a newbie when I was learning the back crawl. And it just, it hurt like hell. I felt stupid. And I've collided with other people's heads that were going in the opposite direction. These are all factors that you gotta think about when you're doing your back crawl. So it's a very, very difficult move to consider with other people around you. So if you're trying to learn back crawl, what I'm saying is learn it in a lane all to yourself like this. And the only things that you have to worry about are the concrete walls on each side that you may crash into with your hands or your head. Another thing you need to consider is your breathing. What I didn't learn about back crawl was the position of the mouth. So you'll notice that when people are doing their back crawl, they kind of like, they have like a, I call it like a, like an oval mouth. And this oval mouth helps to filter the water. So if any water should land into my mouth, and if I'm breathing normally like this, I would automatically drink that water. And that's what happened to me in the beginning. Because I would breathe like this. And that, oops, water drips in because of my arms. And ugh, it's disgusting. And doing this, doing this mouth position tightens my throat so that it can trap any water from entering in. My throat is loosey-goosey and water can be prone to entering my system, right? But if I'm tight like this, throat is tight. So it can block any water from entering. And if the water does enter, if I'm doing this, I can filter it. Water, as you'll see, will enter your mouth. So, the pros and cons of doing backstroke. Well, the pros are your kicking goes a lot further. It's a lot easier to do when you're on your back. Two, you don't have to worry about blowing bubbles in the water when you're on your back. So you can breathe normally if you want, if you want to avoid putting your mouth in the water. Well, there you go. Backstroke is for you. Now, let's talk about the cons. The cons, well, obviously, like we explained, it's a blind move. This is all you see. You can't really see this back ahead unless you crank your neck. You can't see anything here. If you stick your head out this way because you're going to sink. You can look to the sides if you want, but this is no help. If you're swimming like this and you're going at a really fast speed, you're prone to crash into something like a wall. Smash your hand blah, onto concrete or headbutt another swimmer going in the opposite direction because you can't see where the hell you're going. And that's one thing that drives me nuts about back crawl is that I, I worry about just just damaging, boom, crashing my hands into concrete walls all the time because there are no indicators in normal pools like this one or if you're on vacation or wherever you go, unless it's a competitive swimming pool, this is what you're dealing with. Another thing you need to deal with is water entering your mouth. Now, like I said before, yeah, you don't have to worry about blood bubbles, but you have to deal with the water entering your mouth if you're doing back crawl like this, right? Especially your arms, your arms will drip water down to your face. And you're gonna have to filter that water. And the only way you're gonna filter it is by doing an oval mouth. If I'm doing this, I gotta deal with water jumping down to my face. All the time. And that's a nuisance. If I were you, if you were a newbie swimmer, you're learning swimming for the first time, you want to learn as fast as you can, skip back crawl, all right? You can learn that later on. I would say learning butterfly and back crawl later on in your journey is, is more effective than combining it with learning front crawl in the beginning because it's gonna slow you down, man. It will slow your learning curve. 
and it will kill your motivation. So learn the front crawl first, then move on to breaststroke, and then tinker around with back crawl and butterfly if, you're, if you've gone that far. So that's my opinion. Again, you don't have to listen to me, but this is what I recommend all my students. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Subscribe to this channel, okay? Smash, smash that subscribe button, please. And if you are new to swimming, you want to learn, I have a swimming course for you where I teach you the foundations to how to swim in no time. And it's called 7 dayswimco You sign up, it's the price of a pizza, and you get instant access to all the videos. They walk you step by step, gives you a game plan so that you know exactly what to do when you enter the pool for the first time. I will be your personal swim instructor. Turn off your computer, get off your ass, get some work done, okay? And start learning how to swim now, okay? It's 2018, baby. It's the year of the, the fish. <laughs> Love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Bye.